Welcome to Rams Iconic, presented by 1800 Tequila, the best taste in tequila. Please drink responsibly. I'm your host, DeMarco Farr, and this is the podcast where we catch up with some of the greatest players ever to wear horns. My next guest played nine seasons with the Rams. He's a two-time Pro Bowler. He threw 122 career touchdown passes, and he's second all-time in passing in franchise history. Please welcome the Rams Iconic, former Rams quarterback Mark Bulger. What's up, man? What is up, DeMarco? It's great to see you. Great to see you, too. I am so stoked to talk to you. I am. Like, when they told me you were coming on, like, I was like, oh, my God, I can't wait to talk to Mark. I haven't seen this guy forever, man. How are you? I'm doing well. I haven't seen you since the St. Louis days, but uh, I know you're out in L.A. now, and uh, I'm looking forward to getting out there and visiting with you. you got to come see SoFi. You won't believe it. You won't believe what this stadium looks like. You won't believe the NFL and, and, and the show they put on now. It's incredible. I know. I, I talked to you just before the show, and yeah, I still haven't been to Dallas's new stadium, but uh, that's what happens when you, when you get old. Uh, like <laughs> like me, I, I'm not going to call you that, but I'm, I'm an, an old guy now. No, I, I fish. You can call me old. It's okay. It's not an <laughs> insult. It's, it's reality, no doubt. Wait, wait, where are you right now? What is behind you? So I live in Nashville now with my wife and two girls, and uh, I was training for the Olympics with Jared Allen and Keith Bullock and Mike Roos, and uh, we start curling, the Olympic sport everyone watches, and we were up north in Minnesota for a couple of years training, and uh, then COVID hit, and I said, I'm going to bring it to Nashville, so here you go. I built a, a curling center here, and uh, it gives people a different feel in Nashville. They don't have to go down to Broadway and party all day they can come here during the day and then uh go out at night well i, I got to party a little bit on Broadway, just a little bit but th there's ice there's curling <laughs> in tennessee i don't even know what curling is how in the heck did you get to curling you're a quarterback and you're I, hanging out with jared allen what, what is this jared allen moved to nashville right when i moved here and he, he made a bet with a buddy to be an olympian and told me he wanted to do badminton. And I called him a day later and said, there's no way we're going to be able to do badminton. So he said, give me two days. And he said, I think we can do it with curling. And literally that's how it happened. And, uh, and Keith Bullock obviously lived here and Mike Roos, Titans, uh, they live here. And uh, you know, we got into it. And George Kittle, the, you know, 49ers. Oh, yeah, we end, know him. <laughs> he, he, yeah, I know. I, I get it, the 49ers. He, he comes in though every week when in the off season and he he started to curl. How in the heck? I mean it. Okay, so there's a bet. Jared Allen has a bet to make the Olympics, and you stumble upon curling. So you're doing it to make the Olympics, or you don't just build a center if you don't love the sport. I mean, do you do you love curling now? No, I do. I'm passionate about it. Jared is too. Jared's still going for the Olympics in Italy. Uh, you know, wow. I, I just couldn't travel as much and. Uh, I said, I'll just do it here. So he, he trains here uh, three days a week. Unbelievable. Well, we'll get back to curling. Um, yeah. Let's go. <laughs> no curling, huh? <laughs> no, let's, let's go back to your Rams career for a hot minute because it, it's funny. Yeah. Um, I didn't know we were teammates. I didn't know we you were. were on the practice squad in 2000. I had no idea until I was getting ready for this show. Did, did Was I a jerk <laughs> in 2000? No, yeah. No, no, no. It was briefly. Uh, it, you guys were making the Super Bowl run. Yeah. And Charlie Army was there at the time, the GM. And Jay, they, you know, the whole crew. And uh, they couldn't give a roster spot up for me. Um, but they said, hey, wait till the end of the season. We'll, we'll sign you. And then the next year I did. And lo and behold, uh, my first year, because I was cut by the Saints. So I just went to Pittsburgh and trained. And uh, we went to the Super Bowl. Um, it was a long season. Uh, uh, super long. Five preseason games. <laughs> five preseason games. Nine eleven, which you know, took the uh, season back a week, and then all the way to the Super Bowl. So it was. Uh, that was my first year. I go, wow, this is the NFL. Uh, so I mean, did you ever? I mean, everybody thinks they're going to be a player or they're going to be a star. I mean, did you ever think you would become a starter on that football team? And and become one of the leaders, go to the Pro Bowl, be a Pro Bowl MVP. Did you know that about yourself that day when you were on practice squad? Uh, kind of, sort of. But, you know, you walk into a – you know that locker room. You know, you had Marshall Falk and you had Kurt Warner, Orlando Pace, uh, the list, London Fletcher, you, you. You had everyone. And I'm walking in in awe. 
But I, it, it reminded me when I went to West Virginia, I never thought I would have a chance to play a down, let alone start for three years. So just had to be ready for the opportunity. And it came, and uh, I just try to make the most of it. That had to be pretty scary. I mean, you got Isaac, who's super intense. Big Orlando, you don't want to let him down. And you got Marshall. And you're the quarterback. You're the guy now. I mean, had to be a little bit intimidating, right? Oh, my second year, yeah. My first start, we were on the one-yard line coming out, playing the Raiders. They were 6-0. Oh. We came off the Super Bowl loss. And we're 0-5. And, and I'm looking at, you know, T. Holt, Isaac Bruce, Orlando Pace, McCollum, you know, all the guys. And I'm just like, oh, gosh, what I get myself into? But uh, they all had my, my six, and that's why I loved them. And uh, – we went on a nice run. That was the secret, right? I mean, that's that's what we didn't let out the door. It, it what made the Rams so great back then? We played for each other. We had each other's back, you know, and we had a you know a healthy dose of Hall of Famers too. So that always helps. Uh, but you you mentioned Kurt Warner, and did you see the American Underdog story? And I wonder. I mean, what was that like for you watching that whole Kurt Warner movie thing going on when you took over for him? Yeah, you know, I, I haven't seen the movie, but I, I remember there was an old show. When I first got there, I was uh, my first year. They did a 20, something like a 20 for 20 or 30 for 30. I don't know. And I'm at his house having a cookout. He invited uh, Jamie Martin and I over and uh, I'm watching. I'm like, I'm sitting next to the guy that's on the show right now. <laughs> he uh, he was nothing but great to me. He taught me so much work ethic wise and how to prepare as a quarterback and you know he he really helped me a lot you know um why did you stop playing it's always a question I wanted to ask you, you played nine you could have played more you're second all time you could have been the franchise leader why did you stop playing well um a lot of it I think that the Rams were going for us through a sale at the time and there was different you know leadership going on and I went to the Ravens for a year just uh because we were struggling and, you know, I wasn't playing, you know, the best. But then, uh, you know, I got, I got married. I had uh, my first kid and my daughter, I, I wanted to spend time with her. And I honestly decided I did my year with the Ravens and wanted to be with my daughter growing up and see it. Uh, I don't regret it one bit, but, uh, you know, someone like a Brady I, and Rogers, I don't know how the, uh, it's a grind, as you know. I, I always say, like, the guys that play, like, 17, 18 years, they don't want to go home. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. How they, they, I, I was <laughs> – it, it was uh, the opposite for me. And, you know, I just want to do some other things. I, I uh, realized that I wasn't getting younger. And, yeah. you know, for me, uh, it's not that I don't love football. I, I do love it. But uh, I, I just know life's short, and I didn't want to sit here at 60 and, and – regret not hanging around with my kids when they were little. Hey, amen to that. Uh, no doubt. Um, priority is always in the right spot. And I'll, I'll tell you, it's funny because I, I came in, I came to the Rams as a broadcaster in 2008. So you were right in the middle of your run. And I rem I was on sports talk radio and oh my God, we used to get into arguments uh, about you. And I would say, look, <laughs> thank you a lot. He's I a great quarterback. Protect him. Give him a sound game plan. Draft Sue. I think you'll be fine. But you know how it goes. Everybody had to have the new shiny object. But I thought you were fantastic. What do you miss most about playing ball? Uh, the, as you know, our locker room was special. It, it felt like a college locker room. Um, and just us hanging out, and, you know, winning. And you work so hard during the week and to finally get a win, you know, baseball and uh, hockey. I mean, they all work hard too, but we get one chance a week and they don't realize Mondays and Tuesdays, if you played Sunday, the, what our body goes through and we're all in the same boat and uh, just the respect we have for each other. It doesn't matter. Black, white, rich, poor, we all are in the same boat and we don't look at it that way. And that's what I miss about being in an NFL locker room. You know, people always ask me, what would I do to change the world? I, I put the world through a Dick Vermeule training camp. That will bring you yep. together fast. <laughs> or Mike Mark, or, quarterback. Was Mike tough? <laughs> was Mike rough? Oh, my God, that's right. You were in the room with Mike. What was that like? 
And he was the head coach. Wow. Uh, I heard uh, he was really tough on Kurt the year he won the Super Bowl. Oh. And, uh, <laughs> he was, I think he was probably even tougher on me. So, hey, it worked. I, it's one of those deals, you know, uh, I, I'm glad it happened, but I'm, I would never do it again. It's, uh, it's a boot camp. <laughs> no doubt. Uh, Mike Martz, uh, like, what do we say? Uh, genius sometimes is loud, and he definitely fits. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's really awesome. Um, so every time on this show, uh, Rams Iconic, we do this thing called My Favorite Play. And this is so funny. Um, I was talking to Steven Jackson. And I brought up some plays, some of my favorite plays that I saw when I was up in the booth. And I brought up that Detroit game uh, where you guys saved the world, saved the Rams from going 0-16. Remember that game, 2009? And it wasn't fun. And I tripped out. It was Matthew Stafford was the starter for for Detroit. I'm like, how old am I? Yeah, I know. That's crazy, isn't it? You were probably with Malcolm Briggs, huh? Yeah, yeah, he was down. I was up in the booth. That's crazy, right? Yeah, um, just, just nuts. So... We do this thing called My Favorite Play, and if you could think back to what do you think is your best play, your favorite play, one that you can't stop thinking about? Uh, oh, there's, there's a bunch, but honestly, I, I do think back to Seattle. Uh, we came back. We were way down in the fourth quarter, and uh, we had a – Mike Mark, we had a hot route, and I just took a wing on it. I knew I'd get in so much trouble if I did it. But uh, we won to Sean McDonald. We had a walk off in overtime, and thank goodness uh, I threw it on the money, and Sean did it because you know I pump faked their safety, and it was a walk off touchdown. And so I got a hug from Coach Martz after, but it, it would have been bad if I did. Oh my God, he hugged you? Did he whisper something in your ear like "Great shot, don't ever do it again"? I had no clue. I was just scared to death he was gonna yell at me even for doing that. <laughs> I talked to Tori Holt about you, and. It was more about Tory going into the Hall of Fame and should be a Hall of Famer, will be a Hall of Famer. Tory oh, of course. But he was talking about your greatness and how he wished you'd be more in front or out in front and tell people how good you are or, or good you were as a player. Um, yeah. It's just not in your character to boast, so I guess we'll do it for you. <laughs> no, you don't have to. Tory, uh, of all people, he made my job a lot easier. I mean, his, the route running, him and Ike B., the way they could run routes, all I had to do is do what Coach Marsh told me, you know, five-step hitch, seven-step, two hitches, whatever, and put it, and I was accurate, so I'll give myself that. But they were, Coach Marsh used to say, be where you're supposed to be when you're supposed to be there. And those guys were always there. And uh, those two guys, they they made uh, pretty much my career because uh, – they they were professionals to the feet. All I remember, Mike screaming at, at Kurt the, when you talked about that ninety nine training camp was, "Don't fool the blanking quarterback." <laughs> <laughs> be where you're supposed to be when you're supposed to be there. That was in the wide receiver room. I, first day I walked in, I go, "Uh oh," and then we'd have a great game and we'd win. And I remember Carol, the uh, secretary for for Coach Mars, would call me seven in the morning every Monday morning. I'm like, "Can I just sleep in now?" Coach Mars had to watch the phone with me before and just critique me. I'm like, we won. I threw for 400. Didn't matter. Didn't matter. <laughs> you think you got it? You don't. I said, okay. <laughs> wow. I miss those days, man. Mark, man, thank you for joining me on the show. This has been special for me, man. It's, it's really great to catch up with you. You look great. I can't believe you're curling. Uh, <laughs> I mean you. We'll be rooting for you either way. So, man, thank you for coming on the show. And I'm going to get you out here curling or sweeping, one of the two, DeMarco. You, I appreciate you having me. You better me. have a lot of Advil. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, man. <laughs> Thanks, brother. That's a wrap on this episode of Rams Iconic, presented by 1800 Tequila, the best taste in tequila. Please drink responsibly. Hope you enjoyed our conversation with quarterback Mark Bolger. I'm DeMarco Farr, and we'll see you next time.